our political history. The Commission has no doubt about that. Stakeholders are likely to rely heavily on broadcast media as well as the new social media. For this reason, combating hate speech, fake news, and other forms of reporting likely to inflame passion and trigger crisis will be of critical importance to the peaceful conduct of the 2019 general elections. The emergence of the internet has changed the way we think and do things, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. It has indeed brought with it tremendous opportunities for the media, like all other sectors, not just the media. It has broadened the scope of human possibilities to share information and knowledge within seconds, such that it is no longer possible to hoard information. It's simply impossible. The social media through digital technology has revolutionized the ability of media organizations and even interested individuals to share breaking news in terms of photos and images. It is now possible to watch television programs on Facebook and even post comments. What was interesting before I was invited to speak was that I saw the chairman on his mobile phone monitoring the live coverage of these proceedings. So individuals can also record scenes, take pictures from their mobile phones, upload them with their narratives on social media platforms such as YouTube, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and share them globally. Such content, content could be viewed by millions of people the world over. The effect is that the monopoly of breaking news, hitherto the exclusive preserve of the traditional media, has been taken away by the new generation of bloggers or those who refer themselves as citizen journalists. This development poses a challenge just as it offers opportunities to media organizations. The opportunity, that media, the opportunity that media organizations have for more platforms to ply their trade is so obvious because no longer do we have complete monopoly um, in only one segment of the media. There is no need to wait for prime time to broadcast events as breaking news cannot be released, are the news actually literally breaks. It has also opened a new way of making money through digital advertising. The downside, however, is the circulation of fake news, which the unsuspecting public may believe as the truth. In any case, media organizations have also been victims. There have been reports of certain individuals cloning the platforms of some media organizations and broadcasting fake news, which sometimes attract public attention. INEC has been a victim too. There is a lot of misinformation in circulation, some of which we have had to refute, posted on the social media by unprofessional journalists and bloggers. Some of them even open fake accounts in the commission's name with the intention of duping unsuspecting members of the public. Recently, we had to ask Facebook to pull down a fake account which was asking people to apply for non-existent jobs in the commission. So too is the fake news that INEC in 2019 will not sell forms to persons with outstanding corruption cases, thereby effectively banning them from contesting in elections. Apart from the fact that INEC does not sell forms to candidates at all, nothing in the Constitution or the Electoral Act empowers the Commission to ban candidates on account of pending investigation or prosecution. How then do we tackle fake news? Some people have suggested some form of regulation by government. But can the government put some control measures in place 
that will not quickly be misunderstood as an attempt to censor the media? If the government cannot regulate who should, the new social media, in our opinion, has become the new normal. INEC does not support censorship in any way. We believe that this is a subject that requires constant conversation until a solution can be found through structured and sustained engagement between the media and other stakeholders. Let me come closer home as I draw my conclusion. In promoting credible and peaceful elections, what is the role of Bonn? It is important to highlight how INEC and Bonn can work together towards the promotion of credible and peaceful electoral process and the consolidation of democracy in Nigeria. As an independent, non-governmental umbrella association of all public and private electronic media organizations in Nigeria, we solicit the support of Bonn in three major areas as follows. The first area is civic and voter education. This we consider cardinal to the statutory function of the commission. The Electoral Act in section 2, subsection A, grants the commission the power to conduct civic and voter education in addition to other functions conferred by the constitution. Every year, but particularly at election periods, the commission commits enormous time and resources on voter education. However, the commission's human and financial resources are always limited, especially given the size of both the country and the voter population. Consequently, the incidence of low voter turnout, void votes as a result of improperly marked ballots, and the case of uncollected PVCs are often blamed on inadequate voter education on the part of the commission. Mr. Chairman, we have been conducting elections since the 2015 general elections. I will come to that later. But we had cause to conduct two by-elections here in Lagos. One, to fill the vacancy in Ifaku Ijai, federal constituency, with over 380,000 registered voters the turnout was 2.9% to elect a member of the House of Representatives in the most cosmopolitan city, not only in our country, in our sub-region, but I dare say also in Africa, certainly the most populous, 2.9%. We later engaged with the civil society and the media, and we were advised that, oh, why should there be restriction of movement on election day? You should allow free movement so that people can vote and then proceed with other engagements. So when we had another opportunity in Lagos in the Etiosa State constituency, we conducted a by-election. There was no restriction of movement. Well, we made some progress over the 2.9%. The turnout in Etiosa was 3.4%. Recently, after a local government election, I had the chairperson of uh, the Lagos State Independent Electoral Commission complaining of low voter turnout in councillorship by elections, in which a councillor won by a margin of 800 votes. But this is not only peculiar to Lagos. We have had elections in our own case in the FCT where one councillor won by a margin of 11 votes. So we are worried about low voter turnout, and we believe that the media can help. We will continue to do our best, but we need the support of all and sundry. But in placing blame on the commission, critics often forget that civic and voter education is a shared responsibility involving the commission, political parties, civil society organizations, the media, and relevant ministries, departments, and agencies, especially the value orientation role of the National Orientation Agency. Our responsibility is voter education and voter sensitization. 
but we have to partner with civil society organizations.